Kim Bash, and I uh, moved to Israel. It's actually been over 20 years. I'm embarrassed to say that I still don't speak Hebrew very well, unfortunately. Um, so I moved here from actually from New York. I made Aliyah. I'm South African, but I happened to be living in America when I made Aliyah. And um, I actually live in the old city right by the Western Wall, by the Kotel. So anybody who ever, those are my Ashtol friends who are coming along, to, coming to the old city ever, you're welcome to come and say hello. And for anybody who is not yet in Israel, you're welcome to, we have a lot of people knocking on the door. And most of the time it's, can I please use your bathroom? <laughs> but anyway, um, tourist paradise, yeah. But we absolutely love it. Uh, we love the community. It's very eclectic. So we, we are uh, very blessed to be living here. I started the series Find Me a Community in Israel just before, well, just as Corona hit, because a lot of people were looking to come to Israel. And unfortunately, as we all know, the country was closed and they still didn't want to stop their aliyah, but they had no, they couldn't do pilot trips. So um, we bought this platform to people. And I'm actually very happy to say a lot of people actually made aliyah from watching some of our calls. So um, we have covered over 40, I think it's nearly over 45 communities around Israel. We want to make, we want, we want people to know that there's a place for everybody in Israel. It's very hard and very challenging when you make Aliyah, um, especially when you're coming from very close-knit communities in America or England or South Africa, Australia, wherever you're coming from. So this way we 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 try and bring the community to you. Um, thank God the, the skies are open and people are now able to come. Um, but many of our guests tonight and are amazing and welcoming and are there for you if you have any questions. How the call is going to run this evening is that we're going to speak to some of the locals from Ashdod, and then we're going to do a little mini presentation about some real estate opportunities. Um, there is so much going on in the neighborhood. And uh, then there'll be uh, time for people to uh, ask the questions that they want. We didn't get in time today to talk about, well, we'll be talking to locals, but somebody like the mayor or, um, I don't know, do we have the mayor on tonight, Daniel? I don't know. I don't no, so. I don't see him uh, on the no, participants. No, no. And unfortunately, I know Ariella is, got sick. Yeah. But um, in the past, we've had been able to get people on. We are working also with the Ministry of Aliyah, just that everybody knows that we, uh, they contacted me actually very recently to find out about where people are moving to, and they wanted some more research. So we're also working with them to try and figure out where we can also find more affordable communities for people to, to move to. Um, somebody's still in the waiting room, just hold on over here. Okay. How this call started with Ashdod, a lot of people in the in the last, I would say, year have been reaching out to me and saying to me, we'd love to find out more about Ashdod. Um, and then Daniel actually initiated and called me and said, okay, Kim, when are we going to do it? So you're doing all these other communities. Why aren't we doing Ashdod? So Ashdod, I think, is an un, really a little gem that a lot of people don't know about. And I think that with people that we're going to meet tonight, you'll see that they are really trying to build the community. So I, I think that it's a, it's got beautiful beaches. The prices, some of the real estate we're going to be looking at tonight is, a, is, an, is expensive. However, there's so much building going on in Ashdod right now that you can get amazing pre-sale prices. So we can talk about that and I can be, I can also help anybody one-on-one -on -one after the call. We can talk about how to buy in Israel. That's a separate presentation and you can also see it on our YouTube channel. So thank you all for coming. I'm going to ask our first person because he needs to go. Shlomo. Shlomo's on the call? Yes, hey, Shlomo. I'm here. Okay, you I see can... I remembered that you needed to go. So you're, thank you're you, on yes. first. So basically, yeah, Shlomo a... needs to go because his son's bar mitzvah is tomorrow morning. So mazel tov, Shlomo. Mazel tov. Brilliant. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you. Okay, yes. so we, we just want to know who you are, where you're from. Tell us okay. a little bit why you chose Ashdod. Anything that you want to contribute that will be amazing. <clears throat> okay, so I am from Toronto, born and raised. Um, I made Aliyah. We're coming up on our 10th month. And I made Aliyah with my wife and my four boys. I have a 12-year-old who's going to be 13 tomorrow, um, an eight-year-old, a five-year-old, and a three-year-old. And um, 
we we were very excited about Ashdod because in Toronto, I don't know if you've ever, if anyone's from there or has been from Toronto, um, you know, it's cold and dark for uh, a few months out of the year. And the weather isn't exactly consistent um, when you do get good weather. So for me, I wanted to be somewhere that, um, I wanted to be somewhere that was going to be opposite from what I've experienced for the last 39 years of my life. <laughs> and Ashdod sort of gave me that, um, you know, good weather, uh, beautiful beach. Um, it was also, we wanted to pick somewhere when I was moving here, I didn't have a job lined up. So I was interviewing and I knew that the work was either going to come from Jerusalem or it was gonna come from Tel Aviv. Um, because those are mainly like the epicenters of like the industry. And Ashdod is still close enough to both cities that I can go to both on a daily basis if I wanted to. So a, a drive to Ashdod from my house, literally into this into Yerushalayim, let's say to Baka or to Ben Yehuda, it's literally an hour from door to door. And from a train, it's about an hour and 15 minutes, which isn't so bad. Um, Tel Aviv, it's about 40 minutes by train about 30 to 40 minutes, depending on traffic, um, if you drive. So it's close enough to all of these main cities. Um, so if you ever feel like you wanna go out for a night out, for a date night, whatever it is with friends, it's still close enough that you can drive to Rishon, you can get all the action of Rishon Letzion, you can go to Tel Aviv, you can go, you know what I mean? Like there's so many great spots that are near Ashdod, which was really important for me. Um, when I moved here, actually, we never been here before, my wife and I. We didn't do a pilot trip and we never, we never came or, or visited Ashdod. My sister made Aliyah years ago, like two years ago, and she moved here. So really primarily we became, we came here because we had family already established and we wanted to be close to our family, which was really important to us. So that's what we came. But when we did come here, because we didn't know what to expect. People told us, oh my gosh, like, don't go to Ashdod. They don't speak any English there. It's going to be so hard for your kids. Israelis are like, they're tough and they're not going to, you know, you need to be with the Anglos, go to Modi'in, go to Beit Shemesh. That's what they were telling us. Go to Renana. But like, you know, Ashdod, it's like old fashioned. Like some of the older generation Israelis were telling us like, oh, don't go to Ashdod. It's like old fashioned Israeli. When we came here, it was totally the opposite experience of what we had, thank God. Wow. Our kids were set up into really great schools. My son goes to an amazing yeshiva in the center of the city is the yeshiva with 500 boys, a brand new building. The school has really done so much to accommodate him in terms of ulpan, in terms of getting him up to speed academically. The, the like the Misrata Klita, our our um, our counselor, or I don't know what you would call her, like our advisor. Her name is Alex Alexandra. Shout out to Alexandra. She's awesome. She's been wonderful checking in on us. Um, you know, we haven't had that experience that like our kids were bullied and stuff like that. Like, yeah, maybe my younger kid got it a little bit. Like my eight year old, it took some adjusting to because in Toronto. Everything is like in a single file line and it's so in order that it's like you'll fall asleep within the five first five minutes. And Israel is not like that. It was like the kids were like jumping up and down and it took time for him to get adjusted, but he got adjusted. You know, kids are resilient and they bounce back. Um, my younger kids, like everything is like fully immersion. Their moras speak very basic English, very basic, but you can manage, you can get by. I actually do not speak Hebrew. My wife speaks Hebrew, I do not, but I get by. People know more English than you think, and it's okay. They're willing, they work with you, and you pick it up, and you go. And for us, it was very important that we wanted to be in a community that wasn't an Anglo bubble. We didn't want to move to the Thornhill or New Jersey of Israel. That was not what we wanted. We wanted to get the full experience. We wanted to be in Israel with Israelis, authentic. We wanted our kids to grow up and we really found a beautiful, very rich Sephardic 
Moroccan, which was very, very important to us, community. The majority, I would say, of Ashdod is that. From what I would experience, mm -hmm. it's that. And then, like, some Russian-Ukrainian also mix. Um, but it's been wonderful, and we've been extremely happy. And, you know, just, you know, I don't know. Everything from the health insurance and the hospital visits that we had were very positive to, you know, it's just, it's been great. So the community has been great. The schools have been great. And um, Rabbi Wasserman is really working hard and, and his wife, Judy, they're really working hard to like make a community. And I've attended some of his shiurs, which has been great. And I think that there's a lot of potential there. And then also just to see the city, you know, it's very clean. It's big enough that you feel like you're in a big city, but it's small enough that it's quaint. And you can drive to all these different areas and every area feels different. The Haredi Rovas, you know, Gimel and Vav and Zayin feels very different from Tet Vav and Yud Zayin. So it's very interesting. That's all. Shlomo, can I ask just one, one or two questions? Is that okay? You mentioned that you have four boys. Um, where do the other kids go to school? Other so boys. they are in a gun. I'm just going to move in because one of my neighbors is um, very animatedly having a discussion with somebody else. So <laughs> you guys don't mind. Um, so we can't I, hear anything. Don't worry. Okay, great. So I, um, my kids, my two younger kids go to a gun. They go to a religious gun and um, it's a beautiful school. It's, it was a brand new build. Like wow. also totally brand new, beautiful. The, the Moras have been incredible, actually so much that like today, tomorrow's my son's bar mitzvah and we're hosting it at my house. And my kids, teachers, like two of them from the younger one and from my eight-year-old have both offered my wife, can we come over? Can we help you guys set up? What do you guys need? Like our neighbors were like working outside, getting the outside nice of our house because we have people coming over. Like it was just like, thank God. Like, Everyone's been really great, you know? And, you, and you're working now? You've got a job? Yes, I have what a job. I work in Tel Aviv. I work, I work for a fintech company in Tel Aviv. So first I started out at a nonprofit and I was there for about four months and then I moved on and I found another position. So, you know, there's opportunities. There's opportunities around us and we just have to, you know, do what we know works, network, speak to people, get out there, put yourself out there, and it comes. Um, I work in Tel Aviv. A lot of jobs are hybrid. So I work two days in Tel Aviv, three days in Ashdod, and my wife tutors, and she teaches at a school also um, a little bit now. So she has a more flexible schedule, which is what we need with four boys who are young. And um, yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Well, it seems like after 10 months, you really have adjusted very well. Thank God. Yeah, we, um, you know, every day it's something new and it takes time for sure. You know, there's it's it's a it's a busy life here. That's what I find. It's a very busy life and it's always go, go, go. But um, you, the main thing is to have Ayin Tov and to have a good eye and a good perspective. And just to find meaning in, you know, in the life here, because it's very meaningful. And that's what I really like about Ashdod also, is that you really do get the Ruach here. You know, there is a Ruach in the stores, in the streets. You know, there is a very strong, traditional, religious, and that was important for me. Where I live, that's what it is. But at the same time, there's a balance. And, you know, there are people who, who are not observant. And you know, very respectful. And there's like this harmony between the religious and the non-religious. And I'm, I really like it. So thank God Hashem should, I should be blessed to stay here and he should not send me back to the diaspora. Amen. Amen. Thanks. Amen. I Shlomo, just love your energy. You, Amazing. Shlomo, thank the way you, you described you. Ashdod, the Pittsburghers on the call will tell you that's exactly how we describe Pittsburgh. The big and, city a tiny place that the communities, yeah. the different ethnicities, yeah. exactly how we used to, we do describe Pittsburgh. And for the Pittsburghers who are on the call, we're trying to get a baseball league going here and at least a baseball game, right, Rabbi? So 
you know, next for those week, who come, someone next week, next week, I'm going to be better off uh, lobbying for a hockey team, not a baseball <laughs> team. You got to know your crowd. No, we want a baseball team. This is our crowd. Harold, for that, I'm getting together. Thank you. Um, okay, Kim. thank you. And big if mazel you want, you have my number. Give us some you pictures. Can, you can give me your number. Uh, you can give my number to somebody if they want to be in touch with me. I sent you a message before. I'd be happy to speak to Amazing. anyone if they want. Okay. Amazing. All the Thank best. You so Sorry, much. I can't I hope it goes well. Thank That's you so much. With the call. Take Thank care. You. Bye. Amazing. Okay. So next up, I'd like to ask Sivan. I think my mom has more than I'll add on with, with what okay. she has to say. Both of you. We're happy to have both okay. of you. Um, okay, so a few of the things, uh, what's his name, Shlomo? Yeah. Shlomo mentioned already. Um, but we moved, I've been here for 30 years. I have five kids that are all born and bred here in Ashdod. Um, my husband and I moved from Tel Aviv. And the reason we moved to Ashdod 30 years ago was because we were looking for a family-friendly city. And Ashdod is very family-oriented. Um, you have to visit other cities in, Ajdo, in, uh, in Israel to appreciate what Ajdot has to offer. Um, first of all, we have a beautiful Tayelet. I don't know if uh, everybody's been to Ajdod ever. There's beaches everywhere and there's a boardwalk that goes from end to end of Ajdod. Um, it has all kinds of uh, exercise machines there and all hours uh, of the day, summer, winter, you see Families there, young people, old people working out. It's very safe. Um, it's one of my favorite things here in Ashdod. Um, also, we have parks everywhere. Um, big, beautiful parks that um, every 100 meters you have, you know, parks for children. Um, we also have something here called a freeway system, which means that there's special lanes for buses. Um, also, there are only, I think, that I don't, I think I've seen it in Jerusalem and Tel Aviv, a lot of cities, I think Ashdod was one of the first ones to get it, which means when you use the bus system, um, buses go much faster and uh, public transportation is extremely convenient. You don't need a uh, car here to get around. Um, that said also Ashdod is, was the first city in Israel that was built, um, that was planned from beginning to end. So it's a very convenient city. There's parking everywhere. There's parking near apartment buildings. There's parking for houses. Um, it's suburbia with all the benefits of a big city. Um, I think that it was mentioned, we have malls, restaurants, hospitals, movie theaters, concerts. Um, and Shlomo mentioned the distance is very, it's an hour from Beersheba by train, close to Jerusalem, close to Tel Aviv. Um, my kids all work in Tel Aviv and they commute every day and it's fine. Um, let's see, uh, you want to talk about the educational system? No, here, I'm going to ask. Okay, <laughs> um, the educational system here is okay. I don't think it's exceptional. <laughs> um, but they have a lot of additional programs here that sets aside, that sets Ajdod aside from other cities in Israel. And, um, that, those extracurricular activities gave my children a huge push in life, I feel. So I just wanted to mention them. A few of the things that my kids did over the years, some of them are um, more exceptional than others, but let's start. There's a surfing school here. Uh, also that sent a Olympic representative from Ashdod. There's a boating school, which is mandatory in, in the curriculum here um, for elementary and for high school. There's a swim team here, which also sent a, um, a representative to the Olympics. Also swimming is mandatory here. It's what, part of the curriculum. Um, there's a, there are a few dance schools here, but there's one in particular, Panov. Um, Panov was a instructor in Russia and he's renowned. And he, moved, he made Aliyah to Ashdod. And I know um, quite a few people who moved to Ashdod because of him, so they could put their kids in his school. Ballet. Yeah, ballet, it's a mm -hmm. ballet dance school. Um, there's a fantastic conservatorium here with a children's orchestra that's also exceptional and performs all over the country. Um, let's see, there's a mathematics program in the afternoons for elementary school kids. Um, also they have competitions in the country and they do quite well. 
There's a chess school, which is either a number one, and if it's not number one, it's one of the leading chess schools. Um, the reason why I know is because my daughter's friend went to a physics competition abroad, and they met some Russians there, and they asked the Russians asked where they were from, and the kids from Ashdod said, oh, you probably never heard of where we're from. We're from Tel Aviv. And they said, oh, Tel Aviv, where's that? We know Ashdod. Like, how do you know Ashdod? And so we know you're, we played your chess you know, uh, team. They competed against us. They were very good. There's robot, robotics classes, and there's a fantastic program called Marom, which is for elementary school kids. It's skills, it's for kids who are um, excel in academics, and they take them out of school once a week, and they take them to a special school, and they teach them art, music, science, movie making, all kinds of things. And the idea behind, I, you have to ask Sivan, Sivan did, but I remember the kids saying that um, they learned without books. It was basically through experiment and, uh, right? Mm -hmm. It's an excellent program. And then one of the best programs that Ashdod has to offer that is not offered everywhere um, is a special computer program called Makshimim. Um, it's a three-year program for high school students to help them place into the intelligence unit. And Ashdod is number one in the country in that program. And I know because my, te my kids teach all over, they're graduates of that program and they also teach in Haifa and all kinds of places all over. And I know that Ashdod is number one in that particular program. And uh, basically Ashdod has everything uh, except for a big booming Anglo community <laughs> and that we're trying to create. You can talk about this program. Do you wanna, okay. What do you wanna yeah. add? And that's it, that's all I had to say. Sivan, you, I mean, sorry, what's, your mom, Sivan, you're the daughter, and your mom's name is what is your name? Cheryl. Cheryl. Cheryl, your English is exceptional. So you is I'm American. I'm American. Oh, but you I said you, you came from Tel Aviv to Ashdod. You threw me off. No, I made Aliyah. I made Aliyah over thirty years ago. From where? <laughs> and I have a, uh, from where? From uh, Maryland. From Maryland. Okay. I was like, that English is just, there's no even accent of the Israeli. I was like, okay, something's going on here. I got confused. You threw me off for a minute. Okay. Okay, great. So Sivan, you are, you, you are working? Uh, I'm currently, I'm currently on the hunt for a job, but I, um, I, just I, was, graduated. I just graduated from Tel Aviv University. I uh, was born in, uh, and raised in Ashdod. Um, Again, like my mom said, I enjoyed all the after school activities and they were exceptional. I um, I got to serve in the army in a very good place. And I, I feel like it was solely because Ashdod offered the very, um, very, very good uh, computer program that my mom mentioned, named Mokshinim, that's offered only in the periphery. Um, and the conservatorium I went to was really, really, really professional. Um, a lot of it is due to the Russian Aliyah that a lot of them taught in universities and then came to Israel and taught and teach high school students. So, so a lot of my teachers are actually teach, used to teach in Russia in the academy. So um, they're very, very professional. And the same goes for the chess team. Um, oh, my mom didn't mention the hospital. Uh, I have two kids. And... Um, I was lucky to be at the hospital here. It's extremely nice and brand new and uh, have, have great doctors. <laughs> the rabbi's daughter is there too. It's good. Good health care is very important. It's, you should I, never I, need to go to the emergency <laughs> room. If you do, Ashdod has the best emergency room doctor in Israel. <laughs> My daughter. <laughs> and the most beautiful. <laughs> Uh, I was there twice, if we're already mentioning twice with my kids, I was in and out within an hour and a half. Um, wow. They're extremely, yeah, that doesn't happen anywhere else. They were extremely professional. They took me in very fast. Um, they're very, very good. So you're, do you want to talk about Ivan, you're living in, you're living in Ashdod, right? You live in Ashdod as well. So I lived in Ashdod till I was 18, then I moved to Tel Aviv for seven years, and now I'm back. <laughs> a lot of people move back to Ashdod to be, it's very family oriented. A lot of people move back to have their parents help out <laughs> with the children. Free and, babysitting. And, 
Yes, and Friday afternoons, it's very nice. Friday afternoons, you see people shuffling, ar shuffling around with pots and pans of steaming out food, taking pans back from their parents from Shabbat. It's a very family-oriented uh, city. Hamish, I like there are a lot of a lot of two generations here. Very nice. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you both coming on. Okay, next up, we're going to talk to Cheryl. Is Cheryl on the line? No, I'm Cheryl. I'm are Cheryl. you Cheryl? Oh, sorry. Did you both sign up independently? Now I'm so confused. Okay, no problem. So the rabbi and Rebertson Wasserman, hello. Hello. Thank you so much for putting this call together. Well, thank you for facilitating it. Um, I obviously know some of the people that are on the call. My wife and I made Ali Ahir to Ashdod um, just almost 10 months ago. And uh, it was interesting. We, we made Ali, we landed August 31st. 11 years earlier on August 31st, our first daughter uh, landed here in Israel as a single girl, Aliyah. And thank God in the 11 years between us, all of our children made Aliyah. So we came here. Thank God all of our children and, and grandchildren are here. Um, people ask us all the time, how did you choose Ashdod? And the answer is Ashdod cho chose us. The truth is that uh, we weren't sure where we were going to go. Obviously, our kids are grown, so we could go anywhere. Um, and we can exist in a, in a religious community, in a non-religious community. It doesn't make a difference as long as it's Israel. Um, and the mayor actually asked us to come and see if we could begin a process of uh, trying to draw Anglos here because for some reason, Ashdod is not on the North American Aliyah map. Um, Ashkelon is very close to here. Uh, obviously, Bitch Hamish, Yerushalayim, Netanya, etc. And we'd like to change that. Uh, we fell in love with Ashdod immediately. Our kids live in the Merkaz, live in the center of the country, and they come all the time. It's very easy to get here. As Shlomo mentioned, we take the train all the time. We drive before, it was months before we got a car. And as Cheryl mentioned, we would just take the bus or take the train. Um, so, and it, it is truly a beautiful city. It is family oriented. People are genuinely nice. Yes, as uh, Shlomo mentioned, overwhelmingly Moroccan, Russian, French, etc. Um, just from a, an Ashkenazi Sephardi perspective, there are literally only a handful of uh, Ashkenazi shuls. However, one of them is close to where we live, and I'm trying to develop it into a place that will be welcoming. Um, specific, not an Anglo shul, but specifically welcoming to Anglos. And so uh, that's, that's our, that's part of our Ashdod story. And I'll, I'll let my wife share her, um, her impressions, but uh, it really is, uh, it is a beautiful place and it is a tremendous merit to be able to be here in Israel and especially to be able to be here in, uh, in Ashdod, Judy. Uh-huh. Hi. Um... I, I guess I just want to point out just a few different things from my perspective. Um, my husband's Hebrew is excellent. Mine is not as great. I've been in several opanim, but um, but I found in general that people here have been so nice and so patient, and um, that's that's been really wonderful. Um, you know, and very encouraging to, to speak. So I also, like Shlomo had said, I heard people say, oh, nobody's going to understand you. And, but that's been really lovely. And it's so beautiful here. Um, so many beautiful things beside the, the yam and the tayelet and the, my, my aunt who is an Israeli, she was here and she said, the beach here is is more beautiful than Herzliya, than 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 Kesaria. It's the most beautiful. She grew up near Tel Aviv. She said this is such a beautiful beach, and it really is. And you see, people are very active, and and it's and and there's older people and younger people and families. It's it's just really a lovely place. And we also didn't want to be somewhere where it's just one you know, one type. It's it's nice to meet people from all over the world and to come to a place where people are accepting because we're all so different. It's it's like all, you know, it, no, not, I'm in an Opan and I'm the only American speaker. 
everybody else is. There's Russian, there's Ethiopian, and there's and there's me, the American speaker. And and um, and everybody and one of the Russians said to me, I can't believe you stayed in the class. And I said, What do you mean? I said, it makes me speak Hebrew because we can only communicate through Hebrew because I don't speak Russian and I don't speak uh, Amharic. Oh, okay. <laughs> but um, but although I'm, I'm learning how to write it, I can copy it from Google Translate. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but anyway, but um, really people have been wonderful. And in terms of the arts, just what Cheryl said, we've only been here 10 months, but um, I, I'm in Avelut, so I couldn't really appreciate certain things as much. But when my mother was here, she was so excited because someone called and said, right near where you are in Ashdod, there's a there's a cultural theater and you, performing, yeah, and arts, performing center. arts center. And I, I passed it and they're like, Yoram Gaon is, is going to, there's going to be a concert. We're going to go with you. And my mother went and she was like a little, she was transformed into a little girl. Like she came back. She was, she said, it was so fun and we were all singing and she had such a wonderful time. And um, my mother really doesn't speak much Hebrew and it was just, she was here and, and she loved it. And it's just, it's just a really special place. And the people, the, the English speakers and the Israelis have all been so warm. And the last thing I wanted to say was I've been blessed to I mean, I'm born and bred American, as you can hear by my very thick accent, Philadelphia. And um, <laughs> but over the years, I've been lucky to come and spend a lot of time in Israel for different reasons, as a student, as a young girl, as a student, um, and then later on as a young married person. Um, not, you know, until finally, you know, af as a grandmother, I finally made Aliyah. But um, what I wanted to say was that when my first grandchild was born, I was lucky enough to, um, can you put it back? <laughs> when, when I, when I, um, when my first granddaughter was born, I was lucky enough to be here for it. And I was in um, Hadassah and Karim, that hospital. And when my third grandchild was born, I was also here in, um, in uh, Shari Tzedek and, um, and, and then um, another one in this hospital in Asuta. And so I've had experiences at different hospitals in different cities in Israel. Um, and I have to say that um, um, Asuta is really special. They, it's, it's new, it's, it's, it's um, uh, you know, they're, they're really great there. And the, you can access the pharmacy right outside and it, it's just an incredible complex. And, and all the doctors there are very professional, very lovely. Um, yes, I'm a little biased because I have a daughter who's working there, but, but really the whole <laughs> setup there is, is amazing. And the one that had the baby here, my daughter, she lives on a Yishuv. She had her baby here in, instead of going to Shalayim, and going to Shari Tzedek or Hadassah, she decided that her last several children she's had here in, in Ashdod. So she comes here. So, um, so the medical care is, is really great. And, and um, I know bureaucracy is bureaucracy, but I have to say that um, the people here are great. When I went to Maccabi and I had to get my card and I was having some trouble and there was this lovely Israeli woman and I was like, I, I, was trying to explain myself and she was so sweet. We were talking about, she was telling me she's going to make me an Ashdodi and she's going to get me great nails and I'll fit right in. So <laughs> everybody's very friendly and very nice and on all levels. And it's just a really, really beautiful city. The parks are incredible. You know, you take a walk here, it's incredible. And you know, I, I'm an Anazi girl in a Sephardi Moroccan place, but it's, it, it it works because everybody accepts everybody, religious, non-religious. It just I, I haven't felt any kind of negative anything. So I don't know. Very, very lovely, lovely place. Very grateful to be here. And I'm so impressed by what you're doing because I really believe if you see a need in a community, you guys are going out there and you're saying, we want to bring more people to Ashdod. We want to show people what the community is like come and that's what I really find so impressive when you saw a need and you just went out there to you know to, you're trying to build something which I think is very 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 special and I do think that Ashdod is very it's not on the map uh, a lot of people don't know anything about Ashdod 
Um, you know, we know a lot, a lot about Ashkelon, Netanya, the other beach cities, Tel Aviv, Rishon Etzion, but Ashdod is kind of pushed to the side. And I really want, and I hope that this call will be the start of building the community. And I really hope that we can do that for you. Um, a lot of people could not make the Zoom tonight. I think also over Corona, a lot of people were Zoomed out. So we had a lot of people calling and saying, please send us information, but we're not going to be able to come on the call. Um, we actually had a few people who were sick tonight that couldn't come on and some of our real estate people. So I'm going to show you a little bit of the real estate, but it's not everything. And Daniel was very kind to do some videos. I didn't get to show everybody, but it's stunning. The beaches, I'm South African, as I said, and we've got beaches, beautiful beaches, in South Africa, these beaches are just as beautiful, white sand, gorgeous sunsets, beautiful, absolutely. So if you're looking for a beach town, I think this could definitely be something that you should consider. And I think it also offers a variety of different types of people from religious to secular and also from retirees to families. And um, and the fact that there's an all-pun program, which is amazing, and that the schools have been you know, very hospitable to the Olim, I think that's also incredible. So what I'm going to do is please forgive me because Ashdod is not my domain. It's not where I uh, work. However, we do work with partner agents. And both of them sent me messages that they couldn't be on this evening very late. So um, for whatever reason. But we can talk. I help. We've sold several properties over the phone on WhatsApp. There's some, you don't need to necessarily come if you're looking for an investment or getting your foot in the door. Ashton has a lot to offer. But the properties tonight that I'm going to show you are just a little glimpse of what there is on the market. And I think it's important on the call to show these properties because I can't, you can't move to a place that there's nowhere to live. And we didn't even talk about rental prices, which maybe some of the callers, uh, if you are renting and if you don't mind sharing an average of what, for example, a three bedroom, if it's a sea view, if it's more inland, what that looks like before I show the little presentation we have. Um, Daniel, are so, you renting or you? So we are we are renting. Um, we are in an apartment that's two blocks from the beach. Mm -hmm. um, we and obviously you heard there are many different neighborhoods and therefore each neighborhood has a character and each neighborhood has a type of building. Some buildings are older, some buildings are newer. From our Mirpeset, we can see the beach um, and uh, we're just a few blocks, a short walk to what they call city, the center of town with, with the area and Ghana Air and restaurants and all of that. So we have how many bedrooms? Four. Well, this is a four bedroom with three bathrooms, which is very rare. And uh, our daughter who lives literally a block away found it. And one of the reasons we grabbed it is because Baruch Hashem, we are a, a central point for our family, Pesach. We have 25 people in the house. Um, some from Chutz Laaretz. Uh, so, so we have four bedrooms, three bathrooms, which sounds like it's big, but coming from a four floor house in Pittsburgh, it, it's, it was difficult. We are paying in rent right now, 7,500 shekel a month. Plus, dollars. so in dollars right now, dollars got a little stronger. In dollars, 7,500 shekel is about, uh, 22 no it's not three it's i can look it's about 2200 um which in your shall i will get you a closet um plus there's just so anybody who doesn't know when you rent here you rent you also pay the property taxes not the owner the renter pays the property taxes and there's a a vad bite which i guess you would call a condominium fee so uh wow. that's you know, um, that's uh, the, the Vad Bayit is, what is it? Uh, the Vad Bayit, to explain to people, it's like the maintenance of the building. So yeah, every, it's every area is going to be different. And you could have a place that has very a small, it depends on what the building has. If it's a secured building, um, sometimes you have yeah. doorman buildings, you have pool in the building, you have amenities in the building. And obviously that's going to go, it will be more expensive if, you have, if it has right. those amenities. So, and only, uh, only get a break on the property taxes for the first year. Like our building is like, I would say our building is about 25% uh, religious. Um, but it's got two elevators, one one of which is always a Shabbat elevator uh, on the weekends and on Chag. So I have no idea if, if our, the other thing also, um, it's the reality of living in Israel. 
uh, which is safer than Pittsburgh and Chicago and New York and Los Angeles. But one of the in the newer buildings, one of the rooms is a shelter. There's a column throughout the building. One of the rooms is a shelter. So like we were looking at two different apartments. One had one, one didn't have one. We chose the one with it because indeed, if you have to go in the middle of the night, you got your grandchildren here. You don't want to have to run downstairs or to the steps. Um, so I have no idea this apartment, what I just quoted to you, what its range is vis-a-vis -vis other apartments, but that's our experience. Um, people like him and others, and uh, those of you, um, there's a there's a, a website, Yad Stein, in English, Y-A-D-2. Dot co dot il or just Google Yachtstein, which is basically the uh, Craigslist of Israel, and you can look you can look at apartment prices and you can map everything on Google <laughs> and see what uh, what we're talking about here. So but, a, lot, but, a lot of the time, I tell people there's no Zillow like in America, which is multiple listing service here. So it's very hard, especially if you don't speak the language, to navigate. So what we do is we have a team of trusted real estate professionals who we will guide and hold your hand every step of the way. So anybody who's looking to go to a store, whether it's a rental or to purchase, you contact me and I will help you every step of the way to find where you need to go. Because you really do need to understand the system to be able to, to figure it out. It's not it's not so simple, but if you have a team of people, it's, it's not complicated either. It's just you don't be stressed out. And a lot of the time, unfortunately, and this is what drives a lot of people crazy, is that a lot of these websites, Yajstein, like Rabbi Wasserman is saying, and Como and all these other things, Madlan, they are, and even, I won't even go into some of the other ones, the English ones are not current. So what happens is the agents will leave on the listings to generate business. So it's very, very frustrating. I had a client send me 12 listings. Not one of them was relevant. So it's not worth your time. I'm telling you as, as a professional, contact either myself or I'll connect you to the people who I work with and they will help you find what you're looking for. Thank you. I stand corrected. And the truth is we had our daughter and our son looking for exactly. us. You know, exactly. So, exactly. that's how it worked. And it turns right. out, of course, it can't be without this story. So it turns out that the there were a number of people looking at this apartment. The landlords decided they wanted to give it to us because they trusted our daughter was a doctor and I was a rabbi. I met them on a Zoom call and I was standing in my shul so they would know I'm actually a rabbi. And then, of course, we went over. We They sent us a gift. We brought them uh, cookies and challah. We're sitting there. And it turns out the landlord worked many years ago in the Sochnut for my wife's uncle. So that, that's Israel. The Bar Hashem, it's one big shul. And, you know, use it. A hundred percent. So we're here to network and to help you. That's what our platform does every step of the way. And let me just show you. I hope I can get on here because this was not supposed to be my presentation. But let's see if I can show you this. Hold on a second. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. Can everybody see my screen? Yes. Okay, great. Okay, slideshow from the beginning. Okay, that's me. Let's move on. Okay, a little bit about Ashdod. Wait, okay. but Kim, this isn't, we're not looking at your presentation yet. Are we not? No. We're looking Why? at teams. Okay. Okay. Yes, welcome to the team. Resume share. Let's do it again. Can you see it now? No, we what see, is going on? We see We're, looking your Microsoft teams teams. Teams. We're looking at Microsoft Teams. Oh dear, I don't know what's going on. Hold on, let's try it again. Hold on a second. I apologize. Okay, we're not going to stress out. Okay. Everybody, please mute unless you're actually talking. Can you see it now? Oh, it says it's loading. Can you see yes. it? Yeah, now we see it. Yay! Now we see it. Muzzle talk. No. Okay, let's go. Okay. Are we back on Ashdod? Okay, it's the sixth largest city with a booming, booming population of over 220,000 people and a reasonable commute to Tel Aviv, Ashkelon, and Jerusalem. Um, and let's carry on over here. 
it's becoming more and more popular, which is true, and we're really trying to help the community grow. This is a new, as I said, um, we have, there are so many projects going along, along the beachfront. Daniel actually did a, a, and I can send you his beautiful pictures he took. There are, you just see the crane, all the cranes going on. They say, there's a joke, what's the national bird of Israel? The crane, because there's so much building all over Eretz Israel right now, and Ashdod is no exception. So this is one of the projects that we are featuring. I actually spoke to the developer today. There are five uh, buildings going up. They've actually just finished the first three. Um, and sorry, the third one is going to be finished in 2025. And you're looking at all different types of apartments in these buildings. Now, because land in Israel, there's nowhere to go this way, we're going up. So if you don't like living in a very tall buildings, then these buildings will not be for you. And we will try and find you more boutique buildings. But a lot of the new construction now, are between anything from 19 floors up to 30 floors. Um, two bedroom apartments, you're looking at about 2.3 million shekels. Three bedrooms, just under 3 million shekels. And then you have incredible penthouses for those who can afford it with private pools, all the way up to 22 million shekels. So this is the kind of pricing, by the way, that's not as expensive as Tel Aviv, because Tel Aviv is absolutely crazy. But you can see Ashdod is definitely picking up on the luxury market as well, especially all these fancy new buildings with doorman, swimming pool, they have gyms, and it's getting up like also like Netanya's become also very expensive. It's not as expensive as Netanya or Tel Aviv. Okay, this is just a listing that one of the agents sent me today. It's a very close walk to the beach. It's over 260 square meter cottage, asking 6.7 million shekels. By the way, I want you to know in Israel, we do not, we only do transactions in shekels. It used to be many, many years ago, we do do transactions in, in dollars, but now everything is done in shekels. Okay, this is right on the beach, an incredible home, over 10 million shekels. But you can see this is unbelievable. Straight from your porch, you look out onto this glorious view. It's brand new, never been lived in house. And this one over here is a little bit more reasonable. You're looking at a four bedroom in a luxury building um, with incredible views. And if you can see on the, the views on the right hand side over here, just under 5 million shekels. But I want you to know that this is just very, very general. We have loads of different properties for all different budgets. Um, and we, as I said, we've sold a lot of real estate, real estate without people coming. But we would set you up with the real estate agents that would be able to take you to the different locations and explain Ashdod, the different areas and where would be the best place for you to buy. Okay, that's just a little brief summary. Um, just stop the sharing over here. What I wanna say for me and what we do as a company, we are a real estate company. However, my, fir my first and foremost thing when, when, when with what I do is that we believe the community is more important than the house. A house is just four walls, but when you find the community, that's when you find your home. So we are dedicated and committing to make Israel a place for everybody to come. So if this is not for you, Ashdod, which I hope it could be, we have a fantastic, as I said, YouTube channel where you can see so many different types of places that we've actually showcased. And please feel free to reach out for a private consultation with me free of charge, myself or Devorah. And we're happy to give you advice accordingly. I want to introduce to you a special guest tonight on our on, on tonight's uh, call, Ellie Goldstone, who is, Ellie, you can, I'm just going to give it straight to you and you can tell everybody what you do because Ellie is part of the buying process in Israel. And I'm not going to go through it, but you need a team of people when you buy in Israel from lawyers, mortgage brokers, and very important, how to get your money to Eretz Israel. So Ellie's going to uh, tell us a little bit about what he does and the company that he represents. So thank you so much, Ellie, for coming on. Thank you so much, Kim. I appreciate it. Uh, my name is Ellie Goldstone. Uh, I work for a company called Wirepay Israel. Uh, I live in Beit Shemesh, although after this call, you know, I'm thinking maybe, maybe I should move to Ashdod. So right now we're in Beit Shemesh. So I come in at the end of the process. Uh, basically, after you found your place with Kim, uh, worked out all the legal issues, you know, with your lawyer. Uh, so then we make sure you can get your dollars over here into Shekel in order to pay for it. Because like Kim said before, 
almost all property in Israel is contracted in shekel, which means you can't just write a bank check from your American account and send it to the seller. It's not going to work. So my job is to get you the most shekel for every dollar with the least amount of headings. Uh, so a bank check, a, a bank check is needed for for closing. Uh, closing in Israel, unlike in America, uh, is when is when you, is sign is when you sign when you sign on the property that's that's considered the closing there's no backseas after that uh so in order to to do that we have to get the bank check uh and we have to get the money cleared uh it's a critical part of you know of the transaction it's something you know we come through on uh in addition to the first payment there's the other payments are usually done with the wire uh and we we take care of you know all those transfers we also uh pay all the closing costs the lawyer the realtor uh, the acquisition tax, the mortgage broker, uh, person who does an appraiser, appraisal, uh, and all this, all this we do without you having to be, you know, involved. We're involved with the accountant, with the lawyers, uh, and we take care of it. Uh, one of the reasons, even if you had a bank account in Israel, you know, it would be so hard uh, to transfer the money is because the regulations have become very tight. Uh, a little while back, Israel used they used to be very uh, easy with accepting money from all different places. Not always was the money, you know, so kosher. Uh, so they actually got sued uh, by the Federal Reserve and they paid a whole bunch of money. And now it's almost like they don't want to deal with Americans because of the headache. Uh, so they keep on asking for more paperwork. Uh, and for someone living abroad, you know, it's not something which is pleasant to do. And uh, so that's what we do. We take care of all the documents uh, showing the source of funds, uh, that the money's kosher, where the money's going to. Uh, almost, you know, again, almost all the work we, I do with the accountant, uh, with a lawyer, uh, your goal is not to have any headaches. I take the headaches for you. Uh, and also one last thing is that we, we also help when to pull the trigger and, and to convert the money because just from last August till now, the difference in transferring a million dollars uh, is 400,000 shekel in how much you would get back, you know, which is a, obviously a huge sum. Uh, so if you have any questions, you know, feel free to contact me. Uh, Kim could give my information and uh, thank you so much. Ellie, if you want, you can write it on the chat. If you want to put it on there on the information, anybody can Perfect. reach out. But as I said, we have a team of real estate lawyers, mortgage brokers, wire transfer people like Ellie, uh, who are the best in the business. And um, just how to navigate. I even have somebody, because my Hebrew is not so good, even though I've been here for so, lo so long. I actually have somebody, like a personal assistant, who helps me fill out forms, uh, get doctor's appointments, um, you name it. She does everything for me, and I have her number as well. So I give her out her details to a lot of my uh, Olim who are coming here who need to help navigate the system. And... Um, Again, it's you do not have to speak Hebrew to be living in Israel. Is it good? And is it, you know, is it beneficial to you to understand the language? Yes, but Google Translate is my best friend. Okay. So I'm on it 24-7. I'm with the teacher that you can cope. Okay. You can do it. And um, I, I don't think that should be anybody should be deterred that they don't speak Hebrew to come and live in Eretz Israel. So and Kim on that point. Yes. On that point, um, I, I just want to, first of all, again, there are many different areas here in Ashdod and many different price ranges and rentals and, and you can buy. But someone from our, our community back in Pittsburgh said to us, um, you know, we, we would love to think about Aliyah, but we have no family, we have no anchor. And we said to them, because we have, a, my wife and I was like, these are our children, and, and some of the people on this call are our dear friends for more than 25 years. We said, yes, that's not true. You have us now. We are here. We are your family. We are your anchor. And, and as Shlomo indicated, there are other people here. Um, so if anybody is thinking about Israel, listen, my friends, as a rabbi in America for many years, America's done. It may take a few decades for it to really fall apart, but it's done. It's time to come home. If your reticence is that you don't know Hebrew, you don't know anybody, don't worry about it. We'll adopt you. We'll bring you here. 
We'll introduce you to everybody, uh, whether it's Ashdod or someone else, somewhere else. We will have you here, and you can do it. You can come. It's not easy. And the reason you come is not to be in America. It's to be in Israel with all of the blessings and difficulties that it has. But you're not coming alone. If you come here to Ashdod, we'll be happy to adopt you. And uh, you're welcome to get in touch with us. I'll, I'll put in the chat our Dude, direct you information. Chat down there? And, and, you know, even for just the visit, if you come by, give a yell. Um, and uh, we'd love to see you. I just want to compliment you, everybody being on the call. It's a small group tonight, but I've done many of these calls. So is Deborah. And I, have, I honestly haven't seen so much enthusiasm about a community before and how much you all are just trying to bring more people which I think is such a testament to you. And it is hard coming here. And you said it for me, Rabbi Wasserman, but I always said, and I know it's a little bit controversial, but I really always say, and religious, not religious, I really feel that God's closing down the diaspora. And whether we like it or not, this is the place we're supposed to be. And um, I, use, I was working in high-end luxury real estate for many years. And I woke up one day and said, what am I doing? What am I doing? I want to help bring the masses to Israel. So that's part of what we do. And I'm here for you. We, help, we are here to help you every step of the way. And we hope that we can be part of your journey back home. 